today we have a user interface unit um, made by Utility Systems, Micro Mega Group Company. This is uh, for a water meter. So prepaid water is a fairly uh, common item where I live and basically this is the unit that's in the house and you would put your prepaid token in on this keypad and then it would uh, grant you X number of units to use and when that credit runs out then this unit notifies you and all of those kinds of things. Um, it communicates via ISM to the rest of the unit. I don't have the rest of the unit. I, they just gave me this which I got from basically just someone off the street. So the reason I've kept this aside is because it's MSP430 based and it's got an LCD. So if we look inside as MSP430 FE4272 and that is a microcontroller with an integrated LCD um, which is cool and the reason this is cool is because the Holtec HD1621 is becoming very difficult to source in terms of getting it to my country so I've looked on uh, Amazon and all those. The problem there is that uh, I don't really trust the sellers. There's something that just doesn't feel right and uh, yes, um, there's the other problem of shipping. Those guys ship with the post office. Uh, where I live there is no such thing as a post office anymore so yes, I'll never get it. Okay, I may put that wire back on. We'll see. It's not really what I need right now. What I have done is I removed the batteries because they were stone dead. I have ascertained that these are connected in parallel and this header here is straight to the battery so that's 3 volts DC that is most obviously JTAG so the next step is that uh, I'm going to try and program this board and I'm just hoping that they haven't disabled the JTAG because this particular processor has a fuse that you can blow and then the JTAG stops working forever um, if they have popped the fuse then I'm out of luck and I'll have to get a new one of these which I'll order from TI and then they can just ship it. It just takes about a week. That's the only snack. Um, other than that there's not else you must just say. There's the CC1101 uh, ISM radio and then they've got another MSP430G handling the, 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 the keypad and it's I think it's capacitive touch because these are not buttons so that communicates with the host processor, that communicates with the radio and it's very minimal because of the fact that uh, all basically most of the pins are used to drive the LCD the common and the segments so yes the next step is um, I'm going to figure out where all of these pins go and then we're going to bust out the MSP FET430 and see if I can actually access this device so what we've done is we've um, put headers on and the reason for that is very simple get power in and to probe it with JTAG so all I did is I just put pins in and I've got that most important set of pins in and before I put it all back together I quickly just traced out the schematic for the JTAG now how did I know where all these pins go? simple data sheet um, it's just a google search away so let's give this some power and see what happens and so what I use is my little battery pack and I'm going to connect it directly over there just like that and we've got something okay so this proves that the microcontroller is okay and it's running this keypad is working very difficult it's a touch sensor system it's really rubbish okay so yes there is something happening interestingly it says the battery is not that full and it's 3 volts okay I presume they want to run it from 3.3 volts, it doesn't matter but uh, the good news is it's working so the microcontroller is ok and we can now proceed to try and probe it to JTAG there it switches off I presume ok 
happened with it. Ah, it's trying to communicate. I presume that's a serial number. Okay, I don't have the other end of this, so I'm not going to bother with this. Trying to make it work, but I am going to try and program this unit. So we've got this good device here as my MSP 430 USB debug interface, the MSP FET 430, it's the older one. Um, the reason I use this one is because they are really expensive, this is an older one and it just says I'm going to keep on going and it's been going for, I think I've had this for 10 years. It just works and I'm not going to give this up for any kind of sum of money in the world, I'm not buying anyone, this thing is just awesome. So normally there's a ribbon here, so I've taken the ribbon out and I'm putting these little jumper wires in. Um, I want to move away from the ribbon cable because I've had problems late with that, so... This is all the pins that are required for JTAG and the next step is to connect it up to that board and see if we can actually get into it. So there goes target VDD. And again, the pinouts of this is available. A Google search away. You just type in Google MSB FET or 30 pinouts and it comes right up. Okay, so that's target VDD ground. We're not using the other VDD pin there because I suspect that allows the tool to program the board. I don't want that. Um, I'll self power it. Okay, so those pins I just need to check again which is which. So that's fairly straightforward. Just go to Google and we can look it up. So the green will be TDO. That's TDO is the last one there. Can't read my handwriting. The purple with the blue next to it will be TDI. So that should be that one there. TMS is the one next to it, which is purple. And then that leaves TCK, which is pin 7, which is the white TCK. And there's one signal left, and that would be reset. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, that's all good to go. I like to power up the MSP430 FET from USB before I do anything. It's just a... Uh, how shall I say, force of habit, but it's also just a good idea. I don't want to put power on the unit before it's powered up. So what we're going to do now... It actually does run, so that means things are not being jammed, signals not being jammed. I'm going to see if I can record my screen. So let's do that because I've got the code up in, up in focus, so let's see if I can actually record the screen. Okay, what will happen now if I reprogram this chip, the original code presumably, is, well not presumably, is definitely going to go away. And uh, then everything that's driving the display and running it at the moment will be gone. And then hopefully I can start writing code. But that, that is if the JTAG is not blown, the fuse. Okay, so let's record the screen and you can see what we've got. Oh dear. Okay, well I couldn't record the screen. But there's good news, we're in with JTAG and I've stopped on a breakpoint. And the reason I couldn't record the bloody screen is because F11 is mapped to the same button. Oh, it did record. So you should see that. It stopped on the breakpoint. So if I run and I pause, it should stop on that brace. And X is zero, so let's just step over it. Stepping 
why is x not incrementing okay that's that's something curious okay but the, the main main thing is that is it is it is running okay so there we have it we were successfully accessing the processor unbelievable okay so that means JTAG should be fine what I am going to do while my screen is recording I'm going to do this I'm going to assign extra value Come on, keyboard. I'm going to assign an extra value and just make sure that I can actually debug it. So this is code that does absolutely nothing useful. The only goal here is to just see if I can for example, if x is greater than 66, then we write x to if we assign 0 to x. I want to s set a breakpoint and see if it hits that breakpoint. So let's just compile and let's debug, and it should hit that breakpoint when that variable becomes 60, greater than 66, actually. So let's see, and it does. And there I can inspect X. X is actually 67, so obviously that's why. Okay. I think that's more than enough evidence that we've actually managed to reprogram this processor. That is really cool, because now that means I don't have to buy another chip. And uh, yes, we can get on with uh, writing some code to program this LCD. Fantastic.